Hi friends, welcome back. So in this video, I will be discussing about uh, test design techniques. Test design techniques can be for block box testing or white box testing. So I will be covering both the uh, test design techniques in this video. So let us first understand what is all about a test design. The test design is nothing but, so we will have to create a test cases plus a test data. That is the first aspect, that is overall uh, concept of a test design. Test design is nothing but a creating a test cases plus along with that we should also create a test data. Then the next step is how will we writing the test cases? What are the different components of a test case? The test case will have a preconditions. So before we are executing what are the condition we should maintain in the application? Then uh, what are the inputs we'll be providing in order to execute uh, the test cases? Once we provide the input for a given step, then we'll be seeing the expected results from the application. Then uh, once the results are there, then that becomes the post conditions. Once the test cases are executed, whatever the result will happen, that we call it as a post conditions. Then we will try to understand what is a common way like uh, once we have a requirements then how will we derive the test cases. This is a general question normally they will be asking. Once we have the requirement we try to decompose. Decompose means we need to try to split the requirements if it is very big. If it is very big where we cannot uh, accommodate it uh, to write a test scenarios or test cases then we have to further break that bigger requirement into a smaller uh, testable features to be considered in testing. Otherwise, we cannot make a given uh, requirement as a pass or fail. In order to do that, we should be able to break down that bigger requirement into smaller chunk of uh, features or requirements which can be easily independently we can test uh, without having any issues. Then the second one is we should also select the input values for those uh, testing that uh, features. Once we have that, then we should go and uh, create a test cases. Then we should be able to execute and uh, get the actual results out of that test cases. So this is how the overall journey of uh, creating the requirements to a test cases. Then we will try to understand what is all about a inputs, inputs to the given test case in order to test and given applications. The inputs can take uh, various values like boolean. The boolean will have only two values. One is 0 or 1 or a true or false. That is only two values it can be taken by the boolean value. What is the numeric value in a particular range? The numeric value can be anything like this or it can be the next value. It can be integer, floating, point or non-negative, it can be anything. Next one is the fixed set of uh, enumerated values like January, February, March. These are certain uh, fixed values which are enumerated values. Let's say if a given uh, month if you want to select, we have to select only out of these uh, 12 uh, months in this. And also if you wanted to select what kind of uh, credit cards we have, only limited number of credit cards will be there like Visa, MasterCard or Discover card. So, all this belongs to enumerated values. Then formatting strings, the phone numbers. The phone numbers also will come with a certain format. File names also comes with a particular format. URLs also comes in a particular format. And credit card numbers also comes in a particular format of a given strings. So all these uh, different inputs we can give to the application in a different format. Then we will take an example one example, this is a United States Postal Service uh, web application where we wanted to test uh, zip code. We wanted to test the zip code. Here zip code is a feature which we wanted to test. We will be providing various combinations of zip code here and after that we will try to submit it. Once we are able to submit, we should be able to get the location of that zip code or it should list the cities out of that zip code. Here what are the valid zip codes we can give? We can give 0 or 1 or you can give even multiple cities zip code we can give. 
Invalid one is empty characters you can give, 1 to 4 characters, 6 characters are very long you can give just to see invalid zip code because the valid zip code is 5 digit US postcode. Till now we understood what are the preconditions, what are the inputs for a given uh, test cases. Then we will try to understand how we will be deriving these input conditions by using various test design techniques. We will be discussing in detail what are those different test design techniques. The first one will cover the block box testing. So in the block box testing the first design technique is equivalence partitioning. So in order to understand the equivalence partitioning you should also understand equivalence classes. What are the equivalence classes we will try to understand. Equivalence classes are nothing but let's say for input range 1 to 10, here what are the different inputs we can give to the application. We can give anything, any data from 1 to 10 I can give to the application. Another uh, set of data we can give is anything is less than 1, that also we can give. And another set of test data we can provide is anything greater than this range, that is more than 10. That way we can classify any data between this 1 to 10 or any data from less than 1 or any data which is greater than 1 can be classified into multiple classes or multiple equivalence classes. If you take an another example, if an input condition requires a specific value, for example here 250 is a specific value here. Now, we can classify even this data into multiple equivalence classes like the data which is 250 only and the data is less than 250 and uh, data which is more than 250. So this is how the equivalence classes we can split. Again, if we take further more examples, here yeah, again input set. So input set we have a different combination of data here. Then, then the other example is boolean value. In the boolean value also we can only take true or false condition. Now we understood what is equivalence classes. Now using that concept of equivalence classes, we will try to adopt the equivalence partitioning technique to derive the test cases or test data. The equivalence partitioning testing is also a method of a block box testing which is the technique which is used to derive in a block box testing. When we use the equivalence partitioning is when all possible test cases that we cannot execute or we cannot go and try all combination. It is not possible. All probable combinations of test cases we cannot go and test with the given limited number of resources availability. So because of that, we will have to select relatively a small number of test cases to actually run. Now we will have to select a subset as we discussed earlier. So we have to split into a multiple equivalence classes. The test data we have to split into multiple equivalence classes and we will have to pick one uh, item from the each classes then our job becomes very easy. Otherwise, it becomes very challenging to execute each and every cases. So, equivalence class represent a set of valid or invalid states for an input conditions. Now, let's take an, an, another example. So, we have different uh, valid cases are there with a different set of data. Again, different set of data is there for invalid uh, cases as well. Now with this valid and invalid we cannot go and execute see here also valid uh, we have so many cases are there invalid also we have so many cases we cannot go and uh, execute uh, so many number of cases. Now again what we have to do is we will have to split these things into further uh, more here. Yeah. If you can see here right what we are trying to do here is uh, we are trying to group now, whatever the groups we have, whatever the groups we have, we will be picking only one item from these groups. If you can see right, red color circle, the one item we will be picking from each group. That means, in place of executing 100 test cases, maybe we will be only executing maybe with uh, 5 to 10 cases from the each equivalence classes. The next design technique is boundary value testing. So, this is a second type of uh, uh, design technique in block box testing. So we will try to see the boundary values here which is near to the 
various uh, borders like value limits even length limits or volume limits if you can take an example where we will try to check for the extreme values of an inputs in the boundary or in the border take an example in this case minus 99 to maximum 99 this is the case here now in this what is the boundary conditions minus 99 is a border case now less than that minus 100 minus 99 minus 98 these are the boundary cases similarly we have a positive cases 98 is a data which is inside 99 is a within the then 100 is a extreme condition similarly we have to see other combinations also see whatever the data which is an extreme condition which is in the boundary that kind of data will be deriving using this boundary value testing. The next type of uh, design technique is decision table. In the decision table uh, design technique, so we will be considering the inputs, conditions or actions are often stated in a boolean way which is true or false or 0 or 1. Wherever our application is representing in terms of input conditions with uh, and actions with uh, yes or no, true or false, then this design technique will be adopted. Now, if you have taken an example in this case, let's take an example of a credit card. So, I will be using this decision table technique to derive the cases for credit card. Here, there are certain conditions are there. For a new customer opening a credit card account, you will be getting 15% discount on all the purchases today. If anyone wants to open a credit card account today, immediately that day you will be getting 15% discount. That is a one condition. And the second condition, if he is an existing customer and wanted to open a credit card account, then if he is already having a loyalty card with him, then you will be getting 10% discount. That is another condition. And the third one is, if he is having a coupon code also, then you will be getting 20% off today. But it cannot be used for a new customer discount. This is the various uh, conditions we have or various rules we have. In order to derive the test cases for this kind of rule, we will have something like this. If you can see, right, a new customer we have. If he is new customer, 15%, loyalty card is 10%, coupon if he is having means 20%. Now, this is a rule. If he is a new customer, if he is S, then he doesn't have a loyalty card. If he doesn't have any coupon code, then he is entitled to get 15% discount. Similarly, we have a rule to then he is a not a new customer, he is an existing customer, but he is having a loyalty card and it doesn't have any coupon code that means you will be entitled to get 10 percent discount then the rule three is he is a existing customer is not a new customer again he doesn't have a loyalty card but he is having a coupon code now that time you will be getting 20 percent discount and another rule is he is not a new customer he is an existing customer he doesn't have a loyalty card he doesn't have any coupon code then he will be entitled to get only zero percent then in order to derive the test cases so we have to put it in this uh, decision table format based on this we should be able to arrive the test cases and derive the various test condition to test the credit card uh, application the next type of test design technique is the state transition testing. Whenever we are seeing the software in terms of states, then we will be using this state transition testing design technique. Here transition states between the one state to another. And here also the inputs, whatever the inputs we try to give based on that input or events, it get triggers to the another state or it gets triggered to the another state transition. Whenever that kind of situation in any application, then you will be using this state transition testing. If you are taking this example, we have an uh, ATM is there. We have an ATM machine is there. In the ATM machine, so we will be inserting the card. Whenever we are inserting the card, then it waits for a pin. When you enter the pin if it is in the first ray the whatever the pin the person entered 
if that is correct then you will get the access to the account if is the first attempt failed then it will give again the second attempt as well and in the second attempts if is able to successfully enter the right pin then still the application or atm will be providing access to that person even the second attempt also if he is not successful then it will it will allow to give a third try even in the third attempt also if he gets his spin okay then the access will be provided even with the third try also if that uh, person is not successful then that atm should take that uh, card and it should uh, not allow that person to take that card from the atm this is kind of a recommend here if you can uh, see here right if any kind of uh, flow happens here a sequence of flows happens and sequence of events happen sequence of inputs happen and each event or each input triggered to the another uh, state here so if if we are if any applications having this kind of uh, recommends then definitely we should adopt state transition testing technique Th then the next type of uh, block box testing uh, design technique is experience based design techniques here one example is error guessing here so basically what we trying to do is we will try to what we do here is based on our experience based on our experience we will try to guess the what kind of errors we may get it we'll try to input whatever the different values and see what kind of uh, inputs or what kind of output we may get it based on the our experience based on our past experience we'll try to anticipate if i try to give this kind of test data we may get this kind of experience or this kind of output we may derive so that this is also another uh, kind of testing it is more of a error guessing technique then the next type of te testing technique is exploratory testing the exploratory testing techniques will be used more often is when we have a lesser documentation or when we do not have enough use cases or when we do not have enough user stories then we will try to adopt the exploratory testing as well as when there is a lack of time and there is a lot of uh, time pressure available within the project even that is the situation we will be using exploratory design techniques and also this exploratory testing normally this testing won't be done independently but this needs to be done in complement with the other design techniques and other way of uh, other formal testing as well this exploratory testing basically it will ensure to find out the very serious uh, defects as well as plot of this exploratory design techniques then we'll try to talk about certain white box design techniques as well there are three types of white box design techniques are there one is uh, statement coverage is there and also we have a branch coverage is there another one is decision coverage in the statement coverage design techniques we will try to verify for each uh, statement in an application in the program internally we will be validating each line of code is as part of the statement coverage in the in the branch coverage basically if you can see right here in the while we will see if this condition enables then only it goes to here otherwise it goes back to the return here that means there is a branching is going to happen based on the decision or branching can have a for loop we have while loops we have even whatever the code we return with this for loops while loops then various different kinds of loop will be adopting this uh, branch and decision covering testing techniques